What is that putrid smell? Hans thought to himself as he followed Arthur into the tunnels that resided within the castle walls. Hans struggled to see ahead of him as the passageway grew darker as the pair got further away from the small entryway that they had used to get inside. He made sure to stick close to his guide as he was led through the maze-like tunnels inside of the castle. The first room that the pair passed by was the kitchen. Hans took in a breath through his nose at the smell of freshly cooked food that leaked through the cracks in the wall. He could overhear a few of the workers muttering among one another about their day and could tell that they were all surprisingly enjoying themselves while working. Huh, you'd never see that in the aisles, thought Hans as he began to think about how different his home was from this place. As he and Arthur continued to make their way past the kitchen, Hans thought he might make things less awkward in the quiet tunnel with some small talk. That's a rowdy bunch. You must love working in there. Hans whispered, but before he could continue talking, he was silenced by Arthur, who was now glaring back at him with one finger pressed to his lips. Be quiet, Arthur sternly whispered. If somebody hears us, we'll both be finished. Now follow me. Hans didn't say another word to Arthur for the remainder of their trip through the castle, which seemed to take forever considering the slow and quiet pace that the two had been moving at. Hans tried to stay focused on the task at hand, but in the silence and with the darkness surrounding it, he couldn't help but begin to lose himself in his own thoughts. What am I doing here? Is this the fool's errand that Lars was warning me about? Hans thought before scoffing to himself. <laughs> Lars, what does he know anyway? We both knew that there was no choice other than to help that little weasel to them. But at least with him by my side, we could have worked out a way for us to get the upper hand. As Hans continued to walk, he was snapped out of his thoughts by the sound of footsteps that seemed as if they were drawing closer. Arthur grabbed Hans' attention and whispered to him, Don't worry about that. Those are just the guards walking above us. Guards? Hans asked with a note of fear in his voice. Listen, right now we are still in the lower level of the castle. Soon we will hit an inclined pathway that will bring us to where I promised the Duke I would get you. Now, if you're done worrying, I'd like to get this done. Arthur turned and continued walking on without giving Hans the chance to say anything else. After easing his mind about the noise from the castle around him, Hans soon found himself once again lost in his thoughts as he traversed the dark passage. Maybe I should have listened to Lars, he thought to himself. Weaselton did not mention how busy the castle would be this evening, the fool, sending me on an errand that he knows is likely to fail. He thinks like my father, only he's no king, but perhaps if I can be successful, perhaps I can show Lars that I'm not the child that he thinks me for and that we should work together. If we do that, we can please our Lord King and earn our place in the family's lineage. Hans and Arthur continued through the passageway for another quarter of an hour before finally reaching a dead end, where Hans noticed a small wooden ladder that was hanging down from the stone ceiling. Hans looked up at the ladder and saw a small hatch that seemed to be closed, and when he looked back down toward Arthur, he saw that the chef was running out to hand him a piece of parchment. Hans looked down at it and noticed that Arthur was handing him a map of sorts. He looked back at Arthur with a puzzled look on his face. This is how you're going to be getting out of here. Arthur explained as he pointed to the map that he was holding. You simply follow this path, he said as he began drawing across the map with his finger. It's the one we just took. You follow that and you'll be out of here. Now, up you go. Up I go, Hans asked. You're not coming with me? Arthur stifled a small chuckle. <laughs> What's funny? How am I supposed to know what I'm looking for up there? Hans asked a bit louder. Hey now, keep your voice down. The walls are thinner up here, Arthur whispered. Listen, all of that is above my pay grade. I've done what the Duke has asked of me. The rest is up to you. But remember to be quiet up there. Not only are the walls thin, but the floorboards are old, so be sure to step lightly. Above your pay grade, Hans began to ask before being cut off again by Arthur. Yes, now get up there. I have to get back to work before somebody starts thinking something is wrong and thinks to ask any questions. Arthur turned to walk away, but before leaving, turned back to Hans and said one last thing. And remember, if you get caught, you never met me, yeah? Hans nodded, 
and Arthur slowly began making his way back down the tunnel. Hans let out a sigh as he looked up to the hatch at the top of the ladder. He took in a deep breath and began his ascent. As he made his way up to the top of the ladder, Hans pressed his hand to the wooden hatch that was blocking his way into the attic. I hope this is it, he thought to himself as he pushed upward. The wooden portal slowly lifted open and Hans made his way up into the attic. And once he was standing up and looking around, he was in awe. He was shocked by the sight of what he estimated as a hundred or more decorative chests and boxes lying around with large antiques and portraits scattered throughout them. What kind of hoard is this? Hans thought to himself about the treasure room he had just seemingly discovered. I certainly have a lot of work to do. Hans took a deep breath and then began to slowly make his way over to the closest group of chests. He knelt down beside the first one and began to unlatch the lid and open it up to reveal its contents. What a letdown, he thought as he lifted up pieces of fine clothing out of the first chest. He figured that he wouldn't find what he was looking for right away, but Hans had hoped to at least discover something of value. He continued to make his way through the chests as fast as he could while doing his best to ensure he didn't miss anything that could possibly be of value and provide the information that the Duke was looking for. However, he kept coming up empty-handed. Every chest that Hans opened up seemed to only contain small pieces of art, clothing, or other small items of that nature. He had yet to find anything that would help him and the Duke take down Elsa and her kingdom. Hans was starting to get more and more frustrated with each chest that he opened, so much so that he went from thinking to himself to quietly cursing the Duke out loud for placing him on such a feeble task. Who does he think he is? Hans muttered to himself as quietly as he could. How dare that little bottom feeder threaten me and then order us to find something that he couldn't even describe so that I could find it. As Hans continued to look through the chests, he slowly began to grow less enraged and more concerned. There was only one chest left, and he had yet to find anything that could be of use to him. And as he slowly opened up the last chest, he dropped his head low when he revealed yet another chest full of clothing and candles. He'd gone through all of the chests, but had come up empty-handed. A headache began to form as Hans began to think about what would happen if he returned to the Duke without any information. If I don't find this blasted thing, whatever it is, there's no telling what he's going to do to Lars and me thought Hans. He says he would rat us out to Elsa, but then he would risk exposing himself. Either way, I'm sure that he'd find some way to throw us to the wolves. Hans shuddered at the thought of literally being left for the wolves. Hans slowly made his way over to the corner of the attic to take a break for a second so that he could calm down and refocus on the task. He decided to sit down at an old, dust-covered wooden desk with ornate engravings all over it. To his surprise, the old chair didn't make a sound as he lowered his weight down onto it. Hans took a deep breath and then removed the map that Arthur had given him from his pocket. He sprawled the map out on the table and began studying it and making sure that he remembered the proper route that would take him back out of the castle. After a moment, he dropped his head down for everything seemed to be hopeless for him. Hans had no expectations of finding the information that the Duke had tasked him with. Hans began moving his head and looking around the attic, studying the corners of the room in hopes of seeing something that he might have missed the last time. But no matter how hard he looked around, he couldn't think of anywhere that he hadn't looked that could hide important information. As his mind began to wander, Hans started messing around with the desk in front of him and began opening the doors aimlessly. At most, he expected to find some papers, maybe some pens or ink, but for the most part, all of the drawers were empty all except for the single center drawer. As Hans slid the thin drawer out to him, he noticed that it contained a small, old-looking key and nothing else. This confused Hans as he reached in and picked the key up to examine it. Hans shrugged his shoulders and placed the key down on the table before continuing to scour the rest of the desk. He reached down to his right to open up the large side drawer that at first appeared to be empty, but something didn't quite sit right for Hans. The drawer seemed to be a lot smaller on the inside than it appeared to be on the outside. That was when he remembered the desks in his father's chambers. They all had tiny little compartments hidden away in them, and Hans couldn't help but think about what the Duke had said to him earlier that day. All royals have their secrets. Hans reached into the drawer and began to feel around for 
anything that felt like it might be a latch or a pressure plate of sorts. And to his surprise, as he put weight down on the upper left corner of the drawer, he felt a small click. Aha, he muttered quietly to himself at the first sign of success he had seen that evening. As Hans lifted his hand, he noticed the drawer began to open to reveal a secret compartment hidden away, just like father's. He thought to himself as he peered inside. He couldn't see much inside, but as he reached into the drawer, his hand stopped as it began to feel a small box of sorts. Hans removed the item from the drawer to reveal a small wooden chest that, when compared to the other lavish-looking chests around the attic, seemed quite plain. Without thinking about it, Hans began to try and pry the chest open, but this one wasn't like the rest. It was locked. Luckily for Hans, though, he had found the key in the drawer. He reached onto the desk to pick up the old key that he had found a moment before and inserted it into the lock on the chest. As the lock popped open, Hans quickly removed the key and began opening the lid. This is it, he thought to himself as he looked down into the box. A large smile began to form on his face. I can't believe I finally found it. No wonder the Duke wanted me to get this for him. Hans closed the wooden chest and leaned back in the chair as he let out a loud sigh of relief. He closed his eyes and tried to relax a bit before walking back through the castle. His relaxation lasted only a moment before Hans' eyes shot open at the sound of someone muttering on the other side of the door that led into the attic from the castle. He sat up quickly as he heard the sound of footsteps approaching up the steps. Hans looked around in panic as he tried to find a place to stow himself. He saw a small cluster of chests nearby and figured that this would have to do. He did his best to quietly make his way over to the chests and duck behind them as the footsteps grew closer. 